how does the brain connect us to the rest of the world? Well, the only way you know about the rest of the world is because we have a brain. The only way that I can see other people, that I can feel their touch when they shake my hand, that I can hear them is because I have a visual brain, I have a somatosensory brain, I have an auditory brain. So to understand ourselves, we need to understand our brain. When Paul Allen became interested in studying the brain, they really had great discussions with the leaders in the field who felt that there was a lot of fundamental information that was missing. So when we got started, we focused on what we call reductionist approach, really trying to understand the parts. Just like we didn't understand chemistry until we had a nice way of ordering them and realizing, okay, these are all the different elements, and by the way, this is the way they interact with each other, right? we need to get to the same stage in order to understand our brains in health and in disease. We've long understood that we need to get to some general principles about what kinds of cells there are in, in the human brain. The cell types project that we're doing right now, most people would equate it to something like uh, the periodic table of elements in chemistry. And that's really what we're trying to establish here with our cell types database. This large-scale team effort really requires expertise from all different directions. It requires electrophysiologists who can do patch recordings. It requires scientists who understand neuronal morphology really well. Uh, it requires computational scientists. I think it's necessary to have all those different types of people working here. So you have all those different physicists, cell biologists. They all have their niche that they contribute to this massive project. Being here, I can just look over at my colleague that's literally five feet from me and say, hey, you got to get recording there. What area of the cortex did you find that cell? To make a cell types product is an integration of almost every part of the institute. When you get the best that each of those individual disciplines has to offer, and you can bring them together and have them work on common goals, you always get the, the highest quality product. How many different cell types are in the brain? That's, a, that's a one of the biggest questions that we have. In order to figure out how many of them there are, we have to understand what makes one component different from another. Each cell has a function. We can learn something about what that function is based on the, the cell characteristics. So if it has long spindly projections, it may reach out, talk to other cells. If it has a certain kind of shape, it may result in being packed together very closely with other cells. They look different. They have different branching patterns. Some of them are very simple, some of them are very complex. And the first question you ask yourself is why? The important early findings from our cell types work are that there are indeed a finite number of classes, that we really can logically bend them into classes of cells. So I think it's a really important first step in that we're, we're very encouraged by the fact that then we can walk through other areas of the brain uh, very systematically and build this out. Uh, what we do uh, at the Allen Institute is we make the data available. So on the web app, you can actually see every trace. You can zoom in, zoom out. In the app itself, you can rotate the cell around, see it in its three dimensions. And the best thing about it, people can download it and then incorporate it into their own system. The field of neuroscience is at a very interesting point right now. There's a real need for standards, and one of the things that we realize, being the size we are and the organization that we are, is that we need to be a leader in the space in helping establish those standards. Building large teams of scientists, getting them motivated and getting them all aligned towards this goal, and, and particularly doing it in an open science way where everything we do is accessible to the community at large. That's a fantastic thing. It's just seeing from that initial Word document into something that spins around and interactive on a website. It's a wonderful feeling when you can get from here to the day that we release this out to the public.